In this video, we're going to talk about tangency and curvature influence in creating surfaces in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, we're going to answer one of the comments or questions that came in asking how the weight of the tangency influences surfaces. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at a couple somewhat simple examples to try to better understand this. If you wanna follow along, you can go to the description of the video and download this data set. So to get started, we first wanna take a look at the sketch tangency weight. We're gonna start by editing that. And note that we have two arcs. Now arcs have a consistent curvature. If we select one of these and turn on the curvature combs, we can see that it is completely consistent. This means that the length of these lines on the curvature combs is the same no matter where we are on the arc. When we have a line, this is consistent because there is no curvature, it's completely flat. Now what we're looking at when we're talking about creating things like surfaces, whether it's a patch or a loft or some other type of surface, what we're looking at is the influence that we have based on the direction. So when we take a look at this arc here, and we take a look at this arc, and I'll go ahead and turn on the curvature combs just to, for consistency here. One thing that we can see is that it's consistent all the way across. If we create a spline between these two, what we've done at the start of this is we've created what's called G0 continuity. Now, G0 continuity is when we have coincident points between the different surfaces. In this case, we're talking about splines and arcs. When we go to G1 continuity, that's when we have tangency between our spline in this case and the arc. When we have tangency, that means that the influence, the handle here, is going to be completely tangent to the curvature at that intersection point. The next step to this is smooth or G2 continuity, where we not only take into account the direction of that influence, but we also take into account the radius of curvature. So what we're looking at is not only the direction of this handle, but we're looking at the length of the handle as well. Now, this is a very basic example here. And what we're looking at is we're looking at the length of these handles is going to roughly equate to the tangency weight when we create a surface. So right now, just by adding a tangent and a smooth constraint, what we're doing is we're putting the least amount of influence that we have on the spline. We can modify these handles, we can increase and decrease that, but you'll notice that we actually don't get a whole lot of change in this case until we get pretty far out, until we make this pretty, pretty long. Now, when we think about the tangency weight in a surface, that value of one or 0.5 or two, whatever it is, you can think about it as the handle, the length of this handle. So what we're going to do is we're going to finish this sketch. We're going to hide the sketch and we're going to show the two extrude weight surfaces. Now, if we rotate these around, these are the exact same as those sketches. They're just extruded into 3D. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a loft between these going from this edge to this edge. And when we look at this from the side, we have it currently connected, which is G0 continuity. Now, if we change this to G1 tangent, and we change the second one to G2, curvature, what we should see is something that looks exactly like the spline that we created. The G1 continuity or tangency was taking into account only the direction of curvature. The G2 continuity is taking into account the direction, but also the radius of curvature. Now, there are a couple of things that we want to talk about here in addition to just adding tangency and curvature continuity, and that's the tangency weight. Now, remember I said that the weight is roughly equal to the handle that we have on our spline. So if I increase this to two, what we're going to see is that the influence at that point, the tangency influence at that point is now increased. Now, we can actually drag this out manually, and you can see once we get to about three and a half, this is starting to look like the spline did when we increased the weight of that handle. Now, as we bring this back, you can see that we're getting closer and closer to what that original handle looked like. Now, one thing that's a little bit misleading here is you can see on screen it says 10, and then it says 15, 20, and here the tangency weight is 2. I like to think of these as a percentage, so 1 would be 100% influence, 
1.5, 150, 2, and so on. The numbers, while they do matter, they don't really represent a true dimension, as you would see in something like the tangency weight here. So for this example, I'm going to say OK to create that surface, but I want to go back and I want to edit this sketch. I'm going to increase the handle here, and then I'm going to use my dimension tool to create a dimension between these endpoints. I'm going to right click and make it aligned, and I'm going to set this equal to 90. OK, so we'll finish the sketch. We're going to edit the loft, and for profile one, we're going to modify this tangency weight. So as I start to bring this out, you can see that we're getting closer and closer to that spline, but it's not an exact one-to-one -one relationship. There's a little bit different interaction between the tangency direction when we're talking about a surface and the tangency direction when we're talking about the spline, but they are very similar. Now, if we go to profile two and I change this tangency weight to say 0.5, what we're doing is we're reducing the amount of influence that this has on the overall surface. If I increase it to 1.5, we're increasing the amount of influence. And again, this can be done on the screen by dragging these handles. This can help you visually see the surface that you're trying to create. And all we need to do is we need to select these profiles and then we can manipulate these handles. So again, if this is what you're looking for here, we can see that approximately two and a half tangency weight for profile two and 1.5 tangency weight for profile one. This gives us the surface that we're looking for. We say OK. And now what we've done is we've created that surface using those inputs and driving the shape. Now, let's take a look at another example. I'm going to hide the sketch, and I'm going to hide these three surfaces, and I'm going to bring the two form weight surfaces. Now, again, very similar example. However, now what we're dealing with is not only curvature that is arcing in one direction, but we're also dealing with curvature that's changing or arcing in another direction. Now, these were created in the forms environment, so they're not actually arcs or splines, they're just created manually by pushing and pulling surfaces. But we're gonna take a look at it using loft, and we're gonna go from one edge to the other edge. Once again, we'll add tangency on one, and we'll add curvature continuity on the other. Now, we'll notice that a few different things happen here. First, because we have curvature in different directions, we are actually dealing with a slightly different scenario because of the change in curvature. The second thing that we're gonna notice is now that the, uh, the surfaces are different, they have more curvature to them, we're gonna see that the edges make more of a change or a difference here. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we align the edges. And now that gives us more of a consistent surface. And then we want to take a look at the influence or the tangency weights. So once again, I've got curvature down here. As I drag this up, you can see the influence changes. I put tangency on this top one, and you can see that as I drag it, we get into a scenario where they intersect, and in this case, they fail. So we have to think about the overall shape of the surface, but this is essentially what these weights do. Now, there is a nuance here that happens. And it's going to be a little bit hard for us to see in this example. So I'm going to hide these surfaces. And I'm going to bring back these two original surfaces. And I'm going to bring back the surface we used in the middle of it. Now, the nuance here is that these tangency weights or these influences are going to be more apparent when we're using an open ended loft when we're using just a start and an end profile with no guide rails. The reason for that is because once we add the guide rails, we don't really have as much flexibility creating those changes that happen internal to the surface. So in a case like this, for example, what I'm going to do is I am going to create a ruled surface off of this. So for example, let's go ahead and create a ruled surface, turn off chain selection. We'll come off of here. But in this instance, what I want to do is I want to create a tangent and just simply pull it out going to right click and repeat that tangent and pull it out this way. So now if we hide this surface body five, what I want to do is create a loft just like we did before, we're going to go from start to end. And this time we're going to add the rails, we'll add this rail over here and this rail over here. Now if I change these two tangent and curvature just like I had before, and I start to change the influence, the weight. You see that nothing is really happening because now what we have is we've got influence coming from all directions and it doesn't have the flexibility to make those changes. 
Even if we say that we want tangency on these two edges, it still doesn't allow us to make those changes because it just doesn't have the available flexibility to create that surface. If we were to select these rails and get rid of them, then the tangency influence starts to have an effect on the overall design. As soon as we add these rails, whether or not the rails are going to have curvature continuity or they're just gonna be connected with G0 continuity, at that point, we really can only say tangent or curvature continuity, and we can't really do anything with the weights because they don't have any effect anymore. So that is a general explanation of what those tangency weights do. And oftentimes when you're using these in the context of a loft or a patch where we have a complete boundary that's defining our surface, really just using tangency or curvature continuity, those are the only things that make a difference. The weight doesn't really have any effect unless you're doing a loft without using those guide rails. Now the loft can have intermediate profiles. We can have a start and an end profile, which we're controlling tangency or curvature continuity, and a middle profile that's just simply going through, and the weights will have an effect there. But as soon as we add those rails, we're sort of negating the, the setting there of tangency weight. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.